Behind me is the brand new 2020 Evoque, and it's one of the most popular cars that Range Rover builds. In fact, the previous generation, the first generation of the Evoque sold over 800,000 units worldwide. Now that may not sound like a lot, but for a small company, that's a lot of cars. So when a manufacturer goes to redesign and improve a best-selling car, usually the design and the new car is more evolutionary than revolutionary. And that is certainly the case with the car behind me. And coming up in this review, we're gonna take it for a ride, we're gonna take it off-road, and we're gonna see what Greece has to offer in terms of testing out the brand new 2020 Evoque. Uh, there's about a 10 k's uh, drive off-road. You will cross the river uh, three times. All right, Nick, are you feeling off-roady? Uh, I have no choice, Roman. This is the only way to lunch, and I want to get to lunch. <laughs> Now guys, keep in mind that uh, Land Rover slash Range Rover was kind enough to fly us out here to Greece to test drive this vehicle. Uh, and so me and Nick tend to partner up on these programs because, well, we just get along really well. And we're the only ones that we trust to keep it shiny side up. That's right. Plus, we're the, let's face it, Nick, we're the two best looking guys on this program, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, there's no question about that. <laughs> I, I, maybe the film the film crew is all right. The film crew doesn't, doesn't agree with that. <laughs> but let's let's okay let's let's rephrase that. You are by far the most British guy on this program. Uh, well, I, yeah, <laughs> of I the journalist because uh, of the journalist, but even even of the uh, instructors, because I hear a lot of Scottish and Greek accents. Now, the one thing that you guys got to keep in mind is that uh, these guys wouldn't design a course that the vehicle couldn't do, obviously. So there's nothing I think that's going to be too technically difficult here this is kind of dirt road plus and if the Roman I'm oh, sorry if the Greek army can do this road so can we <laughs> hi I'm Peter Bingham I'm the architecture chief program engineer for the PTA platform a whole new platform underneath it a whole new Vogue so let's start with the easiest question which is uh, new platform mm -hmm. new generation of car what has changed what's changed well at a platform level pretty much everything in terms of metal, sheet metal and metal components, the only piece that we've carried from the old Evoke to the new Evoke are the door hinges. Everything else is new. And why those? <laughs> <laughs> they were good enough as they were. All right, fair enough. <laughs> this new Evoke has the newest version of Land Rover slash Range Rover's terrain response system, which means that the car is optimized to figure out what kind of terrain you're on. So if you're on the top of a mountain in Greece and you're driving across a dirt road, it will send power to whichever wheel has the most traction. You can manually select whatever type of terrain you're on, but if you leave it in auto, the car is smart enough to figure out which terrain response is best for the type of terrain that you're on. You are in uh, rut mode, aren't you? I am. Yeah, there's different modes here. But so we've got auto, right? Yeah. Then we have basically Sand. Yeah, this little guy that looks like a, a car next to a cactus. Then we have a car next to a tree, which is what we're in. Yes. And then what's that one? Snow. Ah, snow. So we have With snow. Snowflake. Yeah. So those are the modes. That's not a very scientific way of explaining it, but it's pretty much the way it works. So Nick, how is it off-road? It's great. I mean, this is the trouble with all of the latest Land Rover um, and somewhat the Jaguar SUV equipment is that they make it so easy to drive yeah, off-road that even that. stupid people can do it. Yeah, like, like this navigation, you know, it's just, just be quiet. There's, there's only one way to go. <laughs> you don't have to tell us to turn right or left. So like once upon a time when you went off-roading, right, you had to be able to rescue yourself. So you had to have things like winches and toe straps and spare tires and D-rings, right? Yeah. Now, of course, all you have is a dial to let you dial in the kind of terrain, which is all well and good until, of course, you get a flat tire and then you still need... <laughs> well, then you have the Land Rover crew to come and rescue you yeah. in their discoveries with their extra equipment. Okay, so we've used a combination of uh, high tensile steels, yep. uh, but also aluminium 
which I, I believe is known to you guys as aluminum. Yes, that's right. Right. <laughs> um, so we've got a cast aluminum front subframe. Um, we also have cast aluminum shock towers uh, here at the top of the front suspension towers. Um, what that's doing is it's allowing us to put stiffness in the right place on the car. And if I can make the car stiff, I'm better able to absorb road inputs and isolate you, the driver or the customer, from the, the, the inputs of the road. And so what that translates to is a car that's more refined than uh, the outgoing Evoque and uh, much more Range Rover much closer to its big brothers in the range. There are two models of the Evoque coming to the US. They both basically have the same engine. It's a two liter four cylinder turbo, but in the P250, it puts out 246 horsepower, while in the P300, it puts out 296 horsepower. Plus it's mated to a mild 48 volt hybrid system. Now what that means is that the bigger engine goes from zero to 60 in about 6.3 seconds, while the smaller engine does it in about seven seconds. Both engines are mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. Land Rover has really been pushing the interior design from a minimalist standpoint. So just like the Velar, the interior of this vehicle is, well, very modern. You've got basically two screens here that serve multi-functions. And in this Evoque, they've taken it up another level with use of cameras. There's a camera that's mounted in the back of the car that projects its image onto the rear view mirror, which lets me see a larger, more distinct version of what's behind me than actually looking in the rear view mirror. And there's something that's unique in the automotive biz, and that is the ability, and let me show you that, to actually see what's in front of the car without looking through the hood. Land Rover calls it clear sight ground view, and it allows me to basically pretend like there's nothing in front of me to see exactly what the wheels are about to hit from a camera point of view. All right, Nick, so here's the plan. We're not gonna go creaming into the Corinth Canal off this bridge, but we are gonna demonstrate some tech, which is this clear view camera up front here, which basically gets rid of the um, hood, right? right? Or the bonnet, as you would say. And the cool thing is you can see exactly what's in front of the wheels. Right. All right, let's go for it. I've never driven down a railway track before. <laughs> Neither have I, a railway trussle. How cool is this? You want to make some train noises, Roman? <laughs> chugga 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 chugga. Choo choo. That's as good as it gets, Nick. Woo woo. Choo choo. I noticed that the guys are st strapped in for health and safety going over this bridge. Yeah. How come everybody but us has harnesses on? I don't it's know. A little troubling. It is a little scary, but this is cool. You have to admit, this is way cool. This wouldn't be a Range Rover if it didn't go off-road, and Range Rover has thought of that. So the approach angle is about 20 degrees, the departure angle is about 30 degrees, which isn't too bad. It's got 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Keep in mind the Subaru Outback has about 8.6, and it will ford over 27 inches of water. Our design director, Jerry McGovern, will tell you the proportions of the car, the large wheels, they all add to what is a really stunning exterior of the vehicle. Yeah, and you've kind of gone, I would say, Velarish, right? Because the lights are a little bit thinner. You've got the door handles that now slide into the body. Was that always something that was part of the design? Well, yeah, certainly some of the graphics pick up on those Velar cues, don't they? Exactly as you said, the lights, the side vent, the door handles. But we've retained some graphics that just mark it out definitely as an Evoque. So the rising belt line, the falling roof line, the wedge towards the rear of the car, the customer will immediately pick that this is this is an Evoque. This is the new Evoque. So how's it going in this car? It's good. You're going to be crossing the Corrente Canal. There's a lot of wind. Okay. Really a lot of wind. If something's wrong, like you see over there, she's staying too much, put on your hazards. There's a uh, notification for us to come help you. So you got a nice clear side ground view. Yes. So if you look at it, you can make some little corrections. Make some little corrections, Nick. Yeah. On this? Yeah, no, yeah. no, you, no will. you have to With you right, make yeah. the steering wheel to the left or to the okay. right. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Look at that also. My colleague is on the other side. When he thinks it's necessary, okay. he will give you directions to the left, okay. give you directions to the right. All right. Don't worry, I stopped all trains for five minutes. Are you nervous? Uh, I wasn't until I got this. I wasn't until I got the speech. Oh, that is a deep. That is a Damn. deep ravine. Oh. Look at that. You're just making it, making 
All right, guys, let's talk. One of the Achilles heels of the Land Rover slash Range Rover brand has always been its electronics, specifically these screens. Oftentimes they've been slow and not the most intuitive. And with this minimalist design, they've basically doubled down on all the controls because they're all virtual now. Now, if you're afraid of that, one of the cool things that the new Evoke has, of course, is Apple CarPlay. So if you don't want to deal with this, you can just plug in your phone and basically have your phone's control controlling the infotainment of the vehicle and that's a pretty easy solution for a lot of people. Mm. What's the one factor that's made it more refined? In terms of road harshness and vibration. Yeah, what's the one thing? Because you're the chassis engineer, so I'm, I'm yeah, sure you spend a lot of time on that. I, I, I think the the thing that really moved things on most substantially was uh, the introduction of the hydro bush into the uh, front low control. So what is it? Can you define what a hydro bush is? Well, a normal bush, uh, yeah. on, when we attach uh, a moving component to the body of the vehicle, we're going to place a piece of rubber in between them. Uh, just to allow we it to move. We call them bushings. Bushing, exactly. You call them bushes. There's always going to be something in there unless you've got a race car. Yeah. So um, what we've done there, instead of taking just a, a, a single compound of rubber, yeah. we have a compound of rubber that also has a fluid contained within it. Oh. The fluid is absorbing the higher frequencies that the rubber itself can't absorb. You good? I'm super new, but thanks for asking. We set up sort of like a fat slouch. Yeah, okay, some of my videos look like a fat slash when I'm in the car with you. All right, Nick, what do you think of these door handles? Uh, they're, they're the pop outy kind, Roman. I, they are the pop outy kind, Nick. You know, my mind goes to how are they going to function in 15 years? Yeah. You know, what happens if, oh so yeah, good. the back two don't come out anymore? Yeah, well, then it's going to be very expensive to fix. It's definitely a polarizing design with the wedge shape. Um, and it's almost an opposite of a wedge shape. So you expect all of those exotic sports cars that have the wedge where the narrow end is the front and it comes out to be this like big powerful like muscle car back end. You think this it looks is, like a bulldog? Yeah, no, a gorilla, no, a gorilla. No, a gorilla. I think it looks like a gorilla. So all the weight and the shoulders is up front in this car. The, everything is up front. So you know how a gorilla stands on its knuckles in the zoo where its head is the same height as its shoulders? Yeah, yeah. It stands there looking down at you. That's this car. Big beefy shoulders on each side. The head is right there with the very sort of narrow eyes looking at you. All the muscular, the weight, the 21 inch, the 20 inch wheels up front. It's all about what's up front here, big chest. Yeah, I think that's a fair analysis of the design language. And it has that cute monkey butt on the back. <laughs> Now that I'm kind of driving in here through the side streets of Greece, it really does shine in its ability to tackle these relatively uh, steep corners. Uh, you know, it's not a canyon car, but it does like to play, Nick, and I'm uh, really impressed by kind of its driving dynamics. The downside of that is it's got a really short wheelbase, and sometimes the bumps do come through the chassis pretty hard when you hit something. Yeah, you know, they stiff. I know I know that you talked to the engineering department a little bit about this, but they've done what they can to try and make sure that the ride is comfortable. They've done what they can to try and make sure that the cabin noise is, is reduced. Even to the way they mounted the engine, they really made huge efforts at trying to make this as much as much of a luxury car as possible. Yeah, and it's interesting that you have the exact same engine, but a smaller and a bigger turbo. That's really the only difference between the two models. Yeah, and I'm, I've never really seen that before. I mean, there's some tuning changes, obviously, in the vehicle. But, but I've never yeah. really seen that before, where they get a jump of 50 horsepower out of the same engine, just because of a different turbo. Yeah, and it, it certainly is doable, but usually it would be like, well, this base model's a 2-liter, and then the bigger one's a 2.5, or right. something like that, right? That right. would be the traditional way that you would do that. Of course, there's a new uh, hybrid version, 48 volt hybrid system. That's correct, yeah. Uh, how does that change the dynamics of the chassis when you're adding, I guess, a little bit of weight from the battery? Is that? That's right, but, but what we've done. And where does that battery live? Somewhere? Well, so the battery lives yep. um, underneath the floor of the car on the, the driver's side okay. of this left hand drive vehicle. Yep. And, and so, yeah, it, it adds weight, but it adds it low down. Uh, the other thing that the new platform enabled us to do is to install it in a way that means it doesn't rob space from the driver, the passenger, from the occupant. So the boot's actually bigger. 
than the outgoing car. Yeah, so you have a little bit more space, right? You can put yep. like, two golf bags in there now as opposed to one. Absolutely. And yeah. we, we did a little bit of off-roading, mm -hmm. uh, and I know in the off-road world, the stiffer chassis is always better because you can basically hang more um, components off of it in a much more controlled sort of way. So yeah. have you given that a lot of thought? I, above all, the car has to be a Land Rover. Yes. And, and that means it's got to be the best in its class off-road. So yes, we uh, absolutely, the stiffer chassis has helped us. But we've also wanted to make the car more accessible off-road as well. So we've used Terrain Response 2, which was previously available on the larger Land Rover and Range Rover products. And you guys test it off-road? Is there you go? We do. You, yeah. Absolutely, we yeah, do. You yeah. Go, like, like dunk it into water yeah. and so, drive it up hills. Absolutely, and we over do. Boulders. <laughs> over exactly uh, the same courses that it, the the larger Land Rovers all cover as well. Uh, this car's only limited when you run out of ground clearance. Hmm. I think it's got in inches, 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Uh, 204 yeah. millimeters. Okay. Uh, that sounds about right. right. Yeah. And, what's, and what's the water fording? 600 millimeters. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I know them using metric, not imperial. <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk it's with me. It's an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for coming here to drive the car. Yeah, yeah heck yeah. The Evoque is basically a compact crossover and it most closely competes with cars like the new BMW X4 and of course the Mercedes-Benz GLC. Now what that means practically is that there's not a lot of room back there. As you can tell, we've got a large size and a medium size bag and that's about it. In fact, this car is just over a half an inch longer. Where has all that half inch of space gone? Well, let me show you, it's in the back seat. That extra half inch of legroom is actually here in the back seat. As you can tell, as always, I'm sitting behind myself and keep in mind, I'm pretty tall, 6'2", and I've got adequate legroom. I've got enormous headroom and what makes this vehicle unique is this enormous glass sunroof. It's something that has been a trademark of the Evoque ever since the very first generation and it gives this car a really airy and open feel. I like it a lot and this is probably going to be one of the biggest glass moonroof slash sunroofs in the business. What do you think of the uh, you know, this infotainment? I'm, I'm okay with it actually. Uh, you know, in the Velar, it, it was very clunky. Um, the Velar system was very clunky when they introduced it with the dual screen and this thing. They seem to have worked out a lot of the bugs here. It's not stalled in as once all day. Um, it seems to be working fine with the system. Uh, I haven't had any like issues with everything, and it's pretty intuitive. The other thing that's kind of good is they've used a lot of cameras because this thing does have a low roof line and it does kind of impair the amount of sight you have. So like for looking out the back, I've got a little bit of a slit, right? Like right. a postcard slit. Right. Whereas with this new camera system, I can, you know. That's it, now you can flip it. Yeah, now I can flip it. Now I've gone basically 50 degrees wider and more vivid than the regular mirror. So you get the camera mirror, then you get the, uh, the, the clear sight, the ground clear, the dot com clear, whatever it's called at the front now. Uh, which Be all clear. Yeah, which utilizes those cameras to so you can see the road during off-roading. The P250 starts at about 44,000 while the P300 starts at about 48,000. There's also a launch edition which gets a lot more expensive. But if you're jonesing for your very own Range Rover Evoque, it will be in dealerships in about two weeks. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, Greek Range Rover Evoque reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.